Hi and welcome to the video. Uh, today we'll be talking about self-care for neck pain and back pain. So essentially how to look after your back and neck uh, whilst, whilst you're at home. Uh, now a lot of people will be thinking at the moment, do I need this extra help or, or can I manage this uh, myself? So you might have hurt yourself um, at home and you're not sure what to do. Uh, you may need help or advice. Uh, and you might be happy managing the problem yourself. Um, you might have the information you need um, already. Hopefully we can give you some extra tips today that will be uh, useful for you. So um, firstly, before we, we kind of delve into it, I um, want to look into uh, what, you know, whether your back or your neck pain is something more serious. We always think safety first, and one of the roles of chiropractors is to determine that and to say if it's something that we can help you with or if it's something more serious that needs you know onward referral to a medical specialist for example um, but the reassuring thing is that 97 percent of back pain is normal mechanical pain um, so it's not serious um, sometimes it can be very severe in terms of the intensity of the pain um, but a lot of the times there's, there's no actual damage there but the sensitivity is ramped up it uh, doesn't mean it's, it's not serious in terms of the amount of pain, but in terms of um, being medically serious, it's normal mechanical pain. Uh, now, in terms of, uh, we'll go through the kind of symptoms that we would be a bit worried about. So one of them is numbness or tingling around genitals, inner thighs or, or buttocks. Um, if you have difficulty peeing. Um, if you have loss of bladder or bowel control. And um, particularly if you have combined um, combined back pain, uh, pain in both of your legs, so the, all of these symptoms, pain in both of your legs, and bowel and or bladder symptoms. Now this is a medical emergency. This is potentially what we call corda equina syndrome. Um, and you need to be seeing someone the same day. Um, so it's a medical emergency and there are um, life uh, life changing uh, consequences if you leave it for too long. If you leave it after a day, usually you can't get surgery for this, or the, the surgery you do have is a lot less successful. Um, so, really recommend if you have these these. We strongly recommend if you have these symptoms, um, you, you do need to call um, uh, call someone immediately to be seen uh, that that very day. Uh, yeah, obviously, in, in a few hours, if if possible. Uh, so chest pain, um, high temperature, uh, so a fever, obviously that's uh, um, uh, quite applicable at the moment uh, with the coronavirus. So 38 degrees Celsius, uh, 100.4 Fahrenheit or above. Um, unexplained weight loss, um, swelling or deformity in your back. Um, if it doesn't improve after resting or is, is worse at night, um, if it started after a serious accident, such as a car accident. Now, if you have any of these signs or symptoms listed above, contact your GP immediately. Um, obviously, we're not as accessible at the moment in terms of um, in person, um, but they're operating what they call a total triage service at the moment. So you're able to phone them, um, book an appointment, um, and a doctor or, or nurse practitioner will ring you back or arrange a video consult to kind of go through that with you. So they're still very accessible at the moment. Um, it, if that doesn't work, if that's not possible, call NHS 111. Um, if you have any of these symptoms, you know, don't delay with this kind of things. Uh, at the moment, the NHS is, uh, is still there. It's open for business, as they say. Uh, anything life-threatening or life-changing, such as the, the um, fifth bullet point down that I've mentioned, uh, they're still available for that, and they do have capacity in A&E for these, these kind of problems. But go through those suggestions uh, below, so contact GGP and NHS 111. So, um, coming on to what you most likely will be experiencing, so the achy back or, or neck. So you may have overdone it. Uh, with DIY. Um, obviously we've got a bit more time on our hands at the moment. Maybe been out in the garden, been cleaning out the garage. Uh, you've had, in terms of this problem, you've had no falls, you haven't had any trauma or anything like that. Um, what can be really useful for, for these problems, very simple, uh, you're probably wondering why the bath is here on the picture. Um, a hot bath can be really, uh, really helpful just to soak the muscles particularly after a long day of DIY or gardening, really help loosen things up. Um, also, you can use a heat pack. Um, you can buy those, uh, you can buy wheat packs that you can put in the microwave. You put it over the area, so just across you, 
across your neck, across those muscles there, if they're quite tight. And again, for the low back, um, across your lower back, across your, your buttock kind of area as well. And that tends to help a lot of complaints or even having a hot shower. So put, put the pack on for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes or so. And you can repeat that a few times throughout the day if needed. Often it's a good one to do uh, in the evening after you have been gardening, for example, or uh, perhaps the following day where you're likely to feel a little bit stiffer from the activities of the day before. Gentle stretching is really good as well. Um, you don't want to be pushing the stretches, just a nice gentle stretch. Don't, don't overstretch at all. Um, we're going for a walk, very simple again, um, but it, we use a lot of muscles when we're walking. Just having that movement where at the moment, obviously, we're, we're sitting about a lot. We're probably a little bit less active than we are um, in a normal daily basis. Maybe we're not walking to work. Maybe we're not walking out for lunch or even walking within the office because we're, we're just in a home office. Um, at home so going for a walk can be really beneficial obviously you may have injured your back or neck so something a bit more serious than, than an achy back or neck this time you've really really overdone it uh, the muscles are actually in spasm now and what you might feel is that it feels like a trapped nerve um, but there's actually no leg or, or arm pain at all but because of the intensity of the spasm, it's causing you that kind of really sharp pain, which kind of catches you in certain movements. Um, so what can be really good in this scenario, uh, just to, again, just to calm things down, is putting some ice over the area. So obviously you see a, an ice, ice pack here. These can be used um, for, for heat packs as well. Um, put those over the area, obviously wrapped in a, um, in a towel, so you've not got direct um, contact, so something like a tea towel. Put it over the area for about 10 or 15 minutes. And the aim isn't to do it for a long duration, just short durations. If you need to do it, do it a few times, maybe two or three times a day, or if you find it more beneficial, you know, a few more times than that, but no longer than 10, 15 minutes. Uh, a lot of patients find this to be um, very pain relieving. Again, it's another simple, simple tip to use. Um, hasn't been a lot of evidence in terms of um, ice packs and or using ice for, for benefits for back or neck pain. Uh, but it's usually due to the fact that we haven't actually done a lot of research in it. So it's more ab absence of evidence because we haven't done the studies yet. There's a lot more evidence now uh, for, for heat packs, but ice packs are largely unexplored, but our, our patients find it's really beneficial. Uh, now avoiding bed rest, and obviously it's something that used to be recommended for back pain. Um, bed rest was meant to be one of the, the treatments for back pain, uh, but since studies since have shown that actually, if, even if you've got really severe back pain, longer than two days in bed uh, tends to be detrimental. Um, so it's that prolonged inactivity, we're not mo moving the muscles, we're not getting that feedback, um, so it's really important to, um, to, to keep relatively active. Obviously, we're told a lot of the time to, to stay active. Um, and we can't be too active when we've injured our back. Uh, not that we're going to cause any damage, but just because certain movements do hurt quite a bit. So it's, it's relative rest. So you're not sitting for prolonged periods. Uh, you're actually getting up to move around a little bit. You're not going to be doing any dynamic activities right now, um, but you, you're still moving around and that can really help to speed up the healing process. Uh, and again, some gentle stretching as well. Uh, um, going for a walk, again, really beneficial uh, for both areas. You might be doing shorter walks initially, but that should build up over time as you get better. Uh, now coming on to um, a pain in the leg or arm. So you may have back pain associated uh, and, and with an associated leg pain at the same time. You may have neck pain with associated arm pain, so coming, coming down from your neck and coming downwards into your arm. And you may have other symptoms on top of pain. So potentially uh, pins and needles, um, numbness. Uh, um, so you feel uh, the sensations reduced on one side, you know, one arm compared to the other, or, or a weakness. And these tend to um, suggest that it's a nerve type problem rather than just uh, muscular. Um, but it may also just be a muscle referral pattern, so not necessarily any, any damage or anything like that to the nerve. 
um, but a spasm in the muscle causing referred muscle pain. And in this uh, picture here, what we see is um, uh, two of the muscles, uh, well, one particular muscle, one of the buttock muscles, gluteus minimus, causing a pain that's referred down the side of the leg in one case and down the back of the leg in the other, it's kind of mimicking a, a kind of disc type sciatica. Now, a lot of the time, um, particularly with um, uh, the back, back pain, with associated leg pain, with a lot of cases, it tends to be when we bend forward that, that um, provokes or exacerbates the pain. Um, so we tend to uh, recommend to avoid that forward bending, particularly first thing in the morning, if it is a disc type complaint, because what happens as you bend forwards, the disc comes backwards, and pushes on the nerve a little bit more. So if things are a bit sensitive around there, if there's a bit of inflammation, um, it can uh, provoke the symptoms. It gives the, the nerve a little bit less space to breathe, so to speak. Um, and then the nerve actually refers pain down your leg. That's why you, you get the leg pain, because the nerve innervates um, the leg in that area. Um, so first thing in the morning, perhaps the first hour or so when the discs are more hydrated, we tend to avoid uh, that forward bending, keep, keep a little bit more upright. And then as, as the disc pressure reduces throughout the day due to gravity acting on it, um, you can then um, start bending, you'll, you'll notice you'll be able to stop bending a little bit further. Again, it's not something that you want to avoid for, for the rest of your life and you're not going to forward bend again, but it's just a temporary thing you do just to modify your symptoms. And avoiding prolonged sitting, obviously that can put some pressure on the discs, but also just generally because you're not moving the area, it's not getting that normal natural mechanical loading, um, which gives you brain feedback that everything's okay and obviously calms the pain down. We tend to stiffen up a lot more if we're not active. So I'd get up um, at least every 30 minutes or so, don't sit for, for, for too long. So again, in this case, I saw heat can be beneficial. So try, um, tr try both, see which one you get on with. Again, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, perhaps about two or three times a day. Um, in this case, you wouldn't be putting it on your leg or your arm. You'd put it um, usually where the source of it would be. So we're saying that this, the source of the pain is coming from the neck. So the nerves in the neck as they run down. So you want to be putting it across here. Uh, for your neck and for your back again just putting it across into that lower area you're not going to be putting it in, into your legs so just kind of um, uh, mid mid lower back and um, see how you get on with that and that should help calm things down a little bit and um, a good thing that's reassuring obviously it does take some time for it to um, go away on its own but natural history which is how long it takes for it to go away on its own for these type of problems is typically about six weeks or so so it does take a bit of time to settle but it, it will will settle down hopefully these tips will help um, calm things down and make it a little bit more comfortable in the meantime over those six weeks um, and also we shouldn't be avoiding activity and movements completely. So um, in, in terms of the range, so um, in terms of um, bending your neck forwards, backwards, side to side, turning left and right, uh, and the same for your back as well, those natural movements. I think just general movements in those positions can be really helpful. Um, you don't want to push it to the point of pain, just just move within that range that's um, pain free for you. You'll find that'll expand over the time as things start to settle for you. And again, go, go for a walk, just, uh, just keeping active, keep your body moving as, uh, as much as you can, working within your limits and know that your limits will, um, will, will decrease. You'll be able to do more over time as you get better. So I thought I'd bust a few pain myths, um, a few common ones whilst we're here. Um, often we think that moving a back will, will make a back worse. Um, but what we've found is motion is lotion, so activity is better for your back. Now the amount of activity you're going to be doing, depending on how intense your pain is, obviously is going to be different. Uh, as it's more intense initially, you're not going to be doing uh, large, large movements. Your range of motion is not going to be large initially, and you're not going to be quite as active. But you can slowly build that up over time and uh, that should be helpful for you. And a lot of people say that if I have back pain, I should avoid exercise, especially weight training, but actually exercise is beneficial for back pain. 
Um, it's one of the, it's got one of the strongest evidence base out of any treatment, and it will help you get better sooner. Obviously, you're not going to be doing any um, any heavy weights initially, but start light and just build build things up. Maybe just body weight initially, and a scan will show me exactly what is wrong. That's a common um, common myth. Sometimes it will. Uh, but more often than not, it won't for mechanical back pain. Um, for most back and neck pain, you'll get better regardless of whether you have a scan or not. That's because um, on an x-ray, we can't necessarily see muscles. You can't see a muscle spasm. And the same on an MRI as well. So it's, um, it's an extra cost and no extra, no extra benefit. At the times when it will, it will is when we have a fracture or maybe there's an infection there or perhaps you know, cancer. But we know that those are the very low rates of that compared to most back pain, whereas 97% of back pain is just completely normal mechanical pain. Now, a lot of us think as well, pain equals damage. So we think, oh, more pain, um, more, uh, there's going to be more damage. So we do worry initially um, about back pain and think, oh, well, perhaps I've torn something, perhaps uh, you know, I've damaged something really badly, and that's why it's so painful. Um, but actually, pain usually means the area that uh, has become more sensitized. We know we haven't fractured anything, we haven't got an infection there. Um, but basically you can have a lot of pain with very little damage, which is, which is most cases, 97% of, uh, of back pain, particularly in those early stages, if you've really caused to, um, really, really overdone it, essentially, uh, think of it, uh, looking at the volume control here, like we've turned the volume control up, uh, our brain is kind of hypersensitive and hyper aware of the area, just in case we've caused damage. Um, but. Uh, more times than um, than not, we haven't actually caused any damage. It's just it, it's become more sensitised, and we're just helping it to calm calm down to get better, and then to get a range back once it's less sensitive. So obviously, at the moment, we're quite cooped up, um, and um, there's opportunity to become more stressed and, and anxious. So we've put a few things together that might be useful for you. One of the things that can be really useful is uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction. Um, for example, you can download what we call the Headspace app uh, from your app store, you know, whether you use Android or, or Apple, um, and it can be really useful. So there's daily, um, daily audio and kind of video things you can follow each day um, on lots of different to topics from anxiety, um, happiness, uh, relationships, lots of different things that can uh, be really useful for you at the moment. Um, now we're, we're cooped up. Um, manage how much news you watch or read. Um, it's quite easy to put a BBC News channel on and kind of watch it for a couple of hours and become more anxious and think, um, you know, how bad things are at the moment. Um, and a lot of things that we see on the news we can't control, which can make us more anxious. So try and limit it to perhaps just watching the Downing Street um, uh, announcement every day and at least you're not watching it too much and becoming more stressed about things that we, you know we, we struggle to control uh, think of the little things that you you're grateful for right now as well and you can also help others in the community uh, that can make us feel better just having uh, providing that support to people around us particularly uh, the elderly at the moment um, in the houses around us and uh, we can only control what we can control. So creating your own daily routine and structure can be really beneficial. Uh, using exercise, uh, we know that obviously the endorphins released in exercise can make us feel much better and it improve our mood, um, helps with stress, helps with depression, helps with anxiety. And connecting with family and friends every day. We, we need that social component even more so at the moment. Now we're in isolation. So uh, general activity rules as well. Um, you, you may not have any pain or aches at the moment so that these, these kind of tips can help keep those at bay. So walking every day, uh, getting, you know, if you're going to do any activity, um, do walk every day, get your body moving. Avoid, again, avoiding that prolonged inactivity. And that's when aches and pains start to creep up on us as we get a bit stiffer because we haven't been moving. 
Um, tai Chi can be useful, yoga, Pilates, there's lots of online classes for these now that you can join in every day and follow on. Um, there's apps for these as well, so you can take the classes at your own, at your own leisure. And uh, the government recommends as well that we have a mix of strengthening and cardiovascular exercise throughout the week. Um, so what this equates to is um, uh, 30 minutes of moderate uh, exercise every day and or 20 minutes of vigorous every other day. So moderate, um, you can talk, uh, but you can't sing. Um, vigorous, you can't talk or, or sing at all. So the, obviously the intensity is much higher, but that'll give you a gauge of um, how intense the activity is. So uh, no, no equipment, then um, we've, we can use body weight exercises and everyday household items, lots of things we can use like cans of beans, shopping bags full of things, we can put things in a backpack so if you're going to do you know, squats or lunges just to make it a bit harder and even doing body weight can be really effective as well and if you're struggling with some exercises there's lots of ways to make them um, you know, reduce the difficulty as well, such as you know, press up straight on the floor can be quite difficult. But if you do them against a wall, for example, you can still get the benefits of the pushing type exercise uh, without that higher level of difficulty, which might be too much at the moment. So yeah, after those tips, I hope those have been you know really useful for you, and I hope they prove to be useful in, in the weeks to come. Um, but if you're still stuck and you need any kind of personalized one-on-one -on -one help, and you've got any particular questions, you're not sure what to do, or need some guidance in certain areas, we're here to help. Uh, one of the ways that we can do that at the moment is what we call video consultation. So we set these up so you can get in contact with us, so we can talk to you on, on video and guide you through uh, any problems that you have. So the initial consultation is 30 minutes and you probably have not done a, a video consult before so we thought we'd put this information together um, so, so you can understand kind of how it works really because it's probably new to a lot of people. So within the initial consultation um, we have a thorough conversation about your injury history or, or your problem. Um, so we ask you questions about that to really delve into it and um, you know personalise it um, for you. Um, we'll take you through some physical tests and we'll guide you through those and that will give us information to be able to give you a diagnosis as to what's actually causing your problem. Once we've done that, we'll create a bespoke plan for you. So that'll include an exercise and a stretching program that'll be emailed over to you as well as specific advice and um, we can give you video guidance through that as well. So if there's anything you're not sure on, we can fine tune those for you. Um, and obviously in between any appointments, any video appointments, um, we're available by email so we can go through anything you need. If you just have a quick question, just send it over and we're here to help you with that. So once you've had your initial consultation, we usually do a follow up consultation, depending on how um, intense your pain is. Obviously, if you're in a lot of pain, we probably want to follow up with you sooner, see how you're getting on, and then we can give you more specific tips as you start to as you start to get better in the different stages of your care. Um, and so perhaps um, after a few days or a week or so, and then we'd space it out a bit further to a point where you feel comfortable you know, managing it yourself as well. So it's giving you lots of things you can do to control, control the pain yourself. So here we've got a picture, um, one of my lovely patients. Um, so this gives you an idea of how the format is. So you'll be able to see me or see, see one of our chiropractors on, on the screen. Um, and some of the exercise examples that we'd, um, we'd send through as well. So, so you've got detailed videos um, of the exercises as well as you know, uh, information such as how many reps to do, how often, um, and uh, specific advice um, through that. So it's really easy to, to see and, and to learn the exercises, but we're here to help if, you, if you're not sure about anything. So yeah, as I said, we're here to support you. Um, so any problems at all, um, let us know. I hope this has been helpful for you today. Um, we've got a number here, obviously the main reception email. But if you've got any direct questions to me, uh, my email's here as well. But hope you're all staying well anyway. Um, take care. Hope this has been useful. And um, I will see you all again once 
once this is over. Um, but if you want to see me in the meantime, I'm here and we, we, can, uh, we can help you all up. So uh, take care. See you later.